Last time, we took a look at the first book in the Legend of the Galactic Heroes series. This time, we're continuing with the franchise with its second title, Ambition. Previously, in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, an attempt by the Free Planets Alliance to defeat the forces of the Galactic Empire is thwarted through the efforts of Admiral Reinhardt von Lohengrom, who, due to his youth and meteoric rise to the ranks, has been nicknamed the Golden Brat by those who, in the Imperial Arist Aristocracy, resent his rise. However, the defeat of the Alliance Navy is thwarted from being a full rout through the efforts of Admiral Yang Wen Li, whose rise to prominence has been basically brought on by sheer luck, the desire not to lose a lot of troops under his command, and the motivating factor of, I really didn't want to be here today, I was scheduled to be a history professor. Honest, I swear. While Admiral Li Gang has obtained a great deal of popularity, both for his victories and his ability to turn a rout into an or orderly retreat, saving lives in the process, his less than enthusiastic support of, support of the government, the war, and generally anything other than him relaxing and writing history papers, has led to factions in the Alliance resenting his rise some, so Yang is tasked with capturing the uncapturable for Imperial Fortress of Isolon, which commands the main space route between the Empire and the Alliance. Yang captures it with no loss of life, and effectively without firing a shot. Motivated by the, motivated by the success at Isolon, the Alliance military launches a full offensive into Imperial space, capturing world after world. However, the success of this offensive is itself a trap masterminded by Lohengram, leading the Alliance to overextend themselves and their supply lines, allowing them to be cut off by his forces. This counterattack is, once again, thwarted from being another route by Admiral Yang, who manages to reorganize the troops for an orderly withdrawal. However, the year through which all this happened, that's right, this happens over the course of one calendar year, ends with the death of the reigning Galactic Emperor, Friedrich the the Fourth. Taking the throne in his place is his son, Erwin Josef II, still a child, with the Minister of State, Klaus von Lichtenlad, as regent. Lohengram stands behind the young emperor, and with this he is granted the rank of Marquis. With the aristocracy of the empire already resenting Lohengram's meteoric rise, and Lohengram being a tremendous amount of influence with his support of the emperor, or of the emperor and regent, and also with his sister having been the last wife of the emperor, of the deceased emperor, the empire now stands on the cusp of civil war. The second installment of Legend of the Galactic Heroes falls into two main plot threads, both involving civil wars, and each focusing on our two admirals, Yang Wen Li and Reinhard von Lohengrom. In Yang Wen Li's plot, he faces a coup d'etat in the Free Planets Alliance, brought on by a group of Alliance POWs released by Reinhard, who have been subverted by Reinhard, some of them anyway, to sow discord and start a civil war in order to keep the Alliance from taking advantage of the upcoming civil war in the Empire. Reinhardt's operative takes advantage of the Warhawks, those with fascist tendencies within the government and the military of the Alliance, and persuades them to try and seize power. They seize several fringe worlds to spread out the Loyalist forces before taking control of the capital on the planet of Hynesen. There, the so-called Alliance for the Restoration of the Republic institutes a fascist state, including massacring protesters who are standing up to their rule. Meanwhile, in the Galactic Empire, Reinhard von Lohengram and his forces face an alliance of members of the aristocracy, who seek to kill him, seize control of the young Kaiser, and run the country themselves. The aristocrats, who call themselves the Lipstadt League, are led by Duke Otho von Braunschweig and Marquis Wilhelm von Littenheim, who both feel that they have equal claims to the throne. And if that last sentence made you think, oh, that's not going to work out well, then you might be correct. By having Reinhardt and Wendley ultimately facing the same general problem, albeit executed differently, we get a really good look at the two characters, and it gives us a better idea of the way they think when they have more or less a free hand. It also better helps to build them up for when they're finally going to come directly into conflict again. In terms of how the story itself is written, much of the world book building that made the last book so splainy has been dealt with. Consequently, Yoshiki Tanaka can focus much more on the people, and consequently, the pace of the volume is much bris much brisker, a pace it could not have sustained if the last volume hadn't spent so much of its page count getting the backstory out of the way. 
Additionally, with this book, it really does a good job of gaining, of avoiding some of the pitfalls that other military science fiction works, particularly American military science fiction works, run into. With basically authors kind of, sometimes unintentionally, taking the tack of everything would be better if the military just ran everything. The problem with government is all those darn civilians in the way. And if the military can just get a free hand to do whatever they wanted with no oversight, everything would be fine. It's a problem that happens way too often in military science fiction. John Ringo, I'm looking at you. Tom Krautman, especially, looking at you. So, I appreciate the fact that in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, we have one faction here, which basically is that. And that's the um, military government that takes over the Free Planets Alliance. And it's clear from the forefront that this actually isn't the right case. This, this isn't the right idea. And we have Yang Wen Li voicing that opinion. And we see from how they run things that they're, that they don't run things as well for running a civilian government as, running civilians as a civilian government would. It, though they also do make clear that the Free Planets Alliance still has its problems. This isn't the solution. Now, next book, things are kicking into an even higher gear, both politically and militarily, but they'll have to wait until next month. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.